family owned and operated locally based Tasmanian company. We've been producing and delivering quality landscaping materials to Tasmanians for 40 years. Composting organics is a key part of our operation. But southern Tasmania needs more modern organic recycling facilities. So we're excited to announce that we have been awarded grants from the state and federal governments that will enable us to expand that side of our business. We plan to use this grant funding to contribute towards building a new high-tech composting facility on our site, located in the Norsky Skoog precinct at Boya in the Derwent Valley, where we've been processing pine bark for more than 10 years. What are the benefits of composting? In 2020, nearly 170,000 tonnes of Tasmanian organic waste were sent to landfill. where it produces large volumes of potent greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide. All that organic material, we don't think of it as waste because the end product is so useful. Every kilogram of it could be turned into valuable compost. With huge benefits for Tasmanian soil and the farmers and gardeners who rely on that soil for their produce and crops. Our vision is to use our existing building located next to Norsky Skoog at Boya and convert it into a composting facility that uses in-vessel composting. That's IVC, technology to ensure our composting is safe and bad odour free. Some of the key features of IVC are Composting occurs in enclosed tunnels with negative air pressure. No odour can escape. All water is captured and reused. No water is released. Temperature, humidity and air circulation are all closely monitored. Building an IVC facility is also highly regulated. We will be working through an extensive external permit and building approval process with Council, the EPA, independent experts and civil contractors to make sure all stages of the project are carefully managed and independently assessed to the highest standard. The operation of the facility will also be carefully controlled. We ensure that organic material is delivered and received safely, with any liquid runoff captured. The IVC process generates heat up to 85 degrees, which pasteurises the compost, killing weed seeds and destroying harmful bacteria like salmonella. The compost goes through a second IVC process to create the finished material. The end product is independently tested and must meet Australian industry standard 4454 2012. We can't wait to make this happen. Making high quality compost products is one of the things we do at Barwix and having a modern local composting facility that can handle larger volumes of organic material and stop it being dumped as waste in landfill is a win for councils, farmers, businesses and all southern Tasmanians. This project has been made possible through grant funding. BG and JM Barwick Proprietary Limited is supported by the Tasmanian Government and the Federal Government's Food Waste for Healthy Soils Fund. For more information, please visit the FAQ section on this website and fill out a feedback form.
Hello and welcome to North Hobart Oval. It is the under-16 girls grand final here. Kingra Black first, Clarence. Third of three big grand finals, girls grand finals here. My name's Bo Downs. It's an absolute pleasure to bring you the action this afternoon. Joining me in the commentary box is Maggie Goldsmith and Emily Burrows. Guys, thanks for joining me. A beautiful day for footy. It's a lovely day for footy. We couldn't have asked for any better conditions today. It's been warm skies for all three games so far. I'm really excited to be out here. Yeah, super exciting. We just saw uh, um, Kimber Tigers running out very dominantly, doing their quick warm up before the game starts. And um, this is the third game in a row that we've commentated. And I just feel like throughout the games, we've seen better and better quality football and um, we've done our warm-ups now so we're super excited to narrate this game with you today um, and find out who will be the under 16 grand final championship today at North Hobart Oval. day for footy out here North Hobart Oval. The ground's in pristine condition. There was a little bit of a dewy patch in that right or left hand side in the pocket there where the shade is but other than that guys it's a pretty picture perfect day for footy. Absolutely I'm watching uh, both teams run onto the field and what we've seen from the two under 14 games is that these young girls are running on, they're beaming with smiles, they're so excited but as we look really close to these uh, Clarence girls and these Tiger girls, there's a somewhat little bit more composure, maybe less of the giddiness and the, the chuckling and a little bit more serious vibes. These are well-established young footballers and we've spoken about it in the first and the second game. What's most exciting um, to watch is the future of footy here. And as I've done a little bit of stat research, we've also got girls in these two teams who have played up into the highest division that we have to offer in the Southern Football League in the Div 1. So what I'm expecting today is some really high precision football, some high quality disposals, mm. some big contests and a lot of emotions. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's so exciting to see the quality of under 16s football and where it's at now. Um, you know, um, some of these girls we were saying before, uh, have, you know, 100 games in them already, you know, most of them probably having 50 plus games in them already, which is just incredible, you know, to be so young and already have that kind of experience. And like you said, you know, they are a bit more serious coming out here and it, mm. and it does mean a lot more to them, mm. you know, um, than it probably did a few years ago. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just awesome to see, you know, the fact that they are, yeah, 16, have all this experience and they've made it to the grand final which is so exciting and they should be really proud of themselves to get to this point. Yeah absolutely it's, it's a really good opportunity to really cement everything you've been working for um, the seasons and pre-season but we know on finals days with the high emotions and the high stakes mistakes happen um, but I'm excited to see the girls overcome that so you spoke a little bit more about girls having 
quite a few games, Em. I'm just going to outline number 20, uh, Rose. Josephine Rose has just ticked over 104 games. And if you're 15, 16 years old and you've got 104 games under your belt, like, that's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm playing with girls who are in their 30s and they're still clocking up their 30 games. Mm -hmm. um, she's also was in the under-17 rep team. She was one of the Beakley winner medals this year. She's got 60 goals just this section. And she's one of those special permits who's played for the Div 1 Tigers who just qualified for their semi-finals in their division and then if I flick over to Hayley Hart also number 20 for Clarence so we can look out for the 20s today <laughs> who's played 75 games she's their captain their big skipper down there she was also one of the recipients of the Beakley medals and same thing she's been playing for the Div 1 Clarence team so high quality football today. We're going to take a little short break um, as we let the girls warm up and then we'll check back in um, just after the acknowledgement of country and the national anthem. Welcome to North Hobart for today's Barwick's STJFL Grand Final match between the Kingborough Tigers and the Clarence Roots. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the country across Australia on which we play our great game and pay respect to them, their culture and elders past, present and emerging. We ask that you all be upstanding for the Australian National Anthem.
So it's a big, big day of football here. We've had two previous games, of course. Clement Bulldogs winning the last one and uh, Kimbra winning the first one. So Kimbra looking to make it two out of three today. Uh, girls, who's your tip? Look, I'm probably going to go with the Kimber trend, um, and I'm going to base that on we've just seen their uh, their emerging talent, and we've seen over the weekend that their SFL Div 1 team has also made the finals, and their TSL men's team has made the finals, so there's something right going on in the Kimber Tigers Football Club, so that's going to be my hot tip, and I've just seen Bo's giving me pointing around that Clarence won the, the toss, and they're going to go up towards the Grange stand. And what's your tip for the day? Well, I'm hoping for a really nice close mm. game. Last time these two teams met, Kingbra got over Clarence by about 16 points. So mm. you'd think maybe the favourites then, but I love an underdog, so I'm going to go with Clarence. <laughs> cool. We, we, want, we want to be split in the middle, but I, I would agree. We want a bit of a closer match. We don't want to blow out, but I think that's exactly what we're going to see today. Like you said before, Bo, beautiful conditions, no environmental factors here, the crowd is ready to go, we're all warmed up and it's exciting just to get this last really intense match underway. Geez, those Clarence girls look serious and really unity with the white. Uh, loving the white yeah. ribbon. And you also <laughs> made a note on the Tigers with their extra yeah, decorations they've today. they've got some war paint going on, they've all got the black and gold on their cheeks, so I uh, Love the little accessories that both teams have happening today. Yeah, they certainly do. They're dressed to impress and hopefully they impress on the field. As we see the Kingbra coach there, James Lang, Clarence coach Nick Davies. So we're nearly about to get underway here for a massive final game of under-16 action here. Kingbra Black facing Clarence. Danny's just about to blow the siren. I think both uh, coaches have daughters playing in each mm. team as well, just for Makes point for of an interest. emotional, yeah. an emotional game. So I think we're about two minutes away from the start here. Pristine con conditions here at North Hobart Oval. Umpire's going to blow the ball. Under 16 grand final action, live from Duff TV. It's going to be the first bounce one there from Clarence. In and under there is Dickenberg. I should say actually Harper there for Clarence. Soccering across the turf again is Kingbra. A little bit of a scrappy kick. Hard to pick up. Taking her out there was Lana Burke. Short hand pass out there to Harper again. Kicks on the eve of the 50. Getting pushed over there was Martin. Umpire didn't see that. Again in and under is Martin. Let me see. A ball up. Go stay here? So right on the painted 50 for the Clarence Roos. Will they get the first forward entry as the ball goes up for a huge ruck tap? One down by Tigers, but definitely smothered by the Clarence Roos. They are fighting along here. Pick up, not quite taken, not what we're after. Veering one way, kick on the right, but it only finds Clarence Roos in Burke. She sends a driving, but it's really close to the boundary. It does a funky little bounce as it's been doing all day. And numbers quickly topple on top of the ball very, very quickly. And we've seen this, it's a theme. The first couple of minutes, it's scrambled eggs everywhere. Everyone wants a touch on the ball. But they go up for another ruck tap. Rose, uh, Clarence Roos wins it down, but it's clearly... Uh, sent out by the Tigers player. Ruse gets the ball first. Quick little handball. Holding the ball. That. Mm. that was a quick call. That was not a lot of time to get rid of it. Lots of push and shove going on in the first few minutes of the game when the opponents are lining up. Love to see it. We love the emotion. That's a great pick up. Taking away. Kicks it down to the right-hand side of the field. And it goes over the contest. This could be Kimber's chance, but they didn't quite pick it up. Bruce fighting for it. Tackled without the ball. Play, umpire says play on. Got play the hands on. to it. We're still scrambling. It's hot property down here. Can't quite get any clear dis disposals. Clarence, Tigers, you name it, they're on top of it. Umpire says ball up. Good man, Danny. Giving everyone a quick breather. A few quite loose players of Roos hanging around the back of the contest that I've already Play noticed. On. Ruck goes up. Clarence got to it Play first. On. Another tap down. Ball not Play correctly on. disposed, but Danny says play on. He wants to keep it free-flowing, and I like that. Tackled by two was Verdal. 
So these two leaving a grand final rematch Why? from last year, the under 15, that I'd assume that they'd be all stepping up as we see. Why on? Hot in the kitchen so far. <coughs> Having to really get away with it is both teams. The Ollie Franks throw the ball up. Nice high toss. Convincing tap down there from Clarence. Running onto that one there is uh, Harper. She's dangerous early. It's going to go in the forward 50 here for Clarence. Maisie Clark just running over that one. And we'll see another ball up here. Deep inside Clarence's forward 50. Single tap down there. It was good from Verdal. Spinning around there out of trouble was Richardson. Taking in the tackle there was Martin. It's all happening here. Bursting out there was the Kimber defender off the half-back line. It was a good kick as well. Two on two here. Even scramble. In and under there was Burke. And pass was smothered there was from Coombe. <coughs> See another ball up here. My goodness, Harper's been working quick this quarter. She is down and under on every pack. It's Fly hot on. property down here, so Tigers win that decisively down. On, got a Clarence on. able to get a hand on it. You can hear the umpire call it out. This is an opportunity. A little bit of a scrambly ball. She can't pick it up. Come on, ball. Bounce for her. But the ball says, no, I'm oblong. I'll do what I want. Tigers dive on the football. Clarence dive on the football. There is bodies flying everywhere. These girls are tough. Holy moly. I They're imagine the adrenaline would be coursing through their veins right now. Absolutely. Tigers win it down, but she's tackled immediately. Straight away oh, by Canel. Could have been a trip there. Was it below the knee? Let's check on the Mood Food replay. Yep. Mm, no. Twas not. Right, ball lingering on the 50 for the Roos, but Tigers need to get it out and they need to have a forward entry themselves to feel like they're in this game. The intention's all there, but the half-backers are floating on that 50 and they're not going to let it go anywhere for the Clarence Roos. Play on, balls out. Balls out, he says. Play on, girls. Keep going. Someone kick it. You. There we go. Clarence Roos gets the boot to ball. It's a fight. It's a dash with a ball bounce. Straight over the line for a behind and they are on the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. Five inside 50s there from the Roos. They're bounding in, leaping in to their forward 50. It's been locked in there. And you just saw zero inside 50s to Kingbra. So look to get it out. Off the hands. Bursting through there was Tilliard again. It's an open goal face. Tilliard can't quite get it. Picking up there was Ivory. Kick just lingered with as she was pushed. And we'll get the second score of the afternoon. And what are you seeing? Oh, I'm seeing some great stuff to start with. Um, as we, you know, the nerves are really high at this point of the game. Um, and it's it's really congested at the moment. I think that as that starts to settle, we'll see a bit more of an open flowing, flowing game. But um, Clarence Ford pressure is really good at sticking to their half of the ground. Um, but yeah, good stuff from both teams to start off with. This could be the clearing kick that Tigers need in the run that they want. She's going to try and kick it off the ground, but it didn't, didn't quite compete. Clarence Roos diving on the ball, and that was a push in the back. So the umpire says that's a great pickup. Umpire standing on the mark. Play Not on. the momentum that Tigers wanted, so you. Clarence Roos will encapsulate that. Kicking it down the line to a pack contest. Love that all these girls jump up. Many Clarence Roos on the players, maybe too many. Smothered. Absolutely smothered by the Tigers in Lang and she was the Beakley, one of the Beakley medal winners this season. So well done to her. That experience is showing through. She was also the best on ground for last year's grand final. So expecting big things from her. Neither Ruck really got onto it this tap down. But Clarence Roos seemed to be able to keep the momentum of the ball going forward. Ducking under the contest, getting that clearing kick, but it's going into the centre of the square. Who will get to it first? Roos have numbers behind and in front of the ball. Ball goes up, beautiful mark, but it was tapped out. Umpire says, play on! Doesn't want to kick on her left. Ball spills out, still goes. She's going to have another go. Still won't kick on her left, but she has a shot on goal for behind. Em, what do you reckon in those moments she probably should just have a crack at? 
Yeah, it is worth having a stab sometimes if you've got the time to sort of steady and switch around. But this game is the pressure's on and you probably don't have the time or mm. space. So, yeah, that's where having both feet as strong as the other mm. is really comes in handy. So, out wide, kicked off the ground there from Tillyard. She's been lively early. Soccering ball inside the inside 50. Doubled up there. Batchel up. Couldn't get it. Left foot. Dinky kick. Pursuit there again is Lang. They go inside 50 again here, Clarence. Kick was good. Worked out. Handed it off to Ivory. She's got an open goal to Houston. And she'll centre it to a teammate. And Millie Richardson can look to kick the first of the afternoon. Mood food replay. Watch as she does a quick little kick out. Nice little handball, sorry. Kick straight through. That's the first goal of the game. Billy Richardson's actually kicked 40 goals in the home and away season this year, so that's that's a really good effort. Um, so, yeah, looking like she's on early, and I think we might see a bit more of her today. When you've got the orientation in front of goal, it makes it really easy. But that was great. She read the ball. She bent down. She also had numbers behind the ball. So... If we flick over, we've got nine minutes is pretty much passed in this first quarter. It's going down real quick. And Clarence are on the scoreboard. 1-3-9 to Tigers 0-0-0. Centre bounce back to the beginning where they started. Ball goes up. Clarence get the fist to it. Strong fist, but Tigers are ruck roving. She fends it off. She tries to get a hand on it. It's looking scrappy. Trying to keep it moving. That's kind of dragged in. But Ruse are pulling it out. There's no time. Push, shove. Serious faces there on the bench. It's a high stakes game. This is grand final. All the emotions come out. No one can quite, quite take a possession of that one. So it's hot property, yes, again. And that's a strong tackle. What these girls don't do is flippant tackles. If they're going to tackle someone, they're going to bring them to ground, Bo. Exactly right. Nice tap down one there from Bachelor. Head over that one is Harper. In fact, it was actually Lana Davy. Hand pass out was good from White, but only as far as an opposition player. We'll go ball up again and directly, nearly in the same spot as we just left off. Tap down again there from Bachelor was good. Bit of a scramble at the moment. In there is Davy. Nice hand pass out to give a little bit of leeway. Harper just couldn't mark. Picking the ball up good there was Brumby. And Richardson will be taking in a strong tackle. She's already got one goal to her name this afternoon already. So we're back into the ruck. Convincing tap down again there from Rose. And to that one, pushing it forward was Batchelor. It'll be a free kick. High free kick going to Clarence. So can they look their second? Driving ball inside 50 from Auxorius will be cut off in the end from Gabby White and she'll look to play on. Switching ball out to that outer wing. And we'll end up in the 50 for Clarence again. Wall just fell in, picked that up. Bursting through there was Lang and she just drills one home. Foot race is on. Ball doesn't bounce kindly for the, for the Tigers, I should say. Back in the middle, it's a bit of a scramble. And I've Rundown tackle to really set the tone. It was laid on. Third out. And we'll have. Play on. That was Lily Harper there with that yeah. tackle. She's been really important these first sort of 10 minutes of this game, applying some really great pressure in the midfield. Great kick there as well. It'll end up in the hands of Charlotte Brumby. Probably a kick away from goal. Lead kick out the back. Richardson hands it off. There is Hart. Snapping kick on goal, we'll miss and in fact miss the whole goal face completely, Maggie. A mm, little bit of a dash around there, did a little quick one-two step, but it was really great um, play by Richardson to put the hands off, even though I'm sure she wanted to have a crack. So they're going to do a kick in straight through the centre of the ground, long kick, doesn't quite hit the 50, it's in a dangerous spot when there's numbers behind the ball. Will she take a bounce? That's quite a few steps, has a shot on goal, no one's on the man on the mark and it goes through and it hits that pulse. They'll go for another behind. I just feel that sometimes we're not quite... Uh, oh, sorry, it's going to be a ball up from the boundary. The, the Tigers aren't really capitalising on these stoppages. 
And that's where it seems that Roos are around the back and not the Tigers. Yeah, I think the Clarence pressure has just been so hot there, right on their man mm. at all times. And when Kingber get the ball, they've only got one, mm. barely a second before they've got a Clarence person on top of them. Yeah, that was a great clearing kick from Michaela Lang as she took it out of the ruck and she's going for it again herself. Remember, she's one of the Beakley win winners and she knows how to use her body and she knows how to use her kicks and she kicks it long. No one's quite completing the marks for her. We got back up but she turns back into trouble. Where is the backdoor handball? Talk, Tigers. Clarence everywhere. Get the foot to the ball. Clear it back into the inside 50 for the 10th time. Numbers are around the ball. We've got to see some fight here. Taking it around using a quick little dish and dash and that is tackle. Did she get a correct disposal? The umpire says... Holding the ball. Holding the ball. Well done, Tigers. Can they capitalise with only a couple minutes to go? They need to get on the scoreboard to keep that momentum alive. Numbers around the contest. We're packed below. We're just seeing that really good ability from the Roos to just keep the ball moving. Don't turn back into traffic. Keep the ball moving. Great big body. bump. Big bump. Long driving kick. But it goes for another behind. So if I flick back, we've got one, four, ten to Clarence, four behind, five scoring shots, but plenty more opportunities to zero, zero black. We've only had one forward entry into the Tigers, I believe, Bo? Yeah, I think we have. Matilda Lang to drive it out. Oh. Two minutes left on the clock. It just feels like Clarence are everywhere at the moment. So another kick in off the hands. Went heavily there, I think, was Rose. In fact, it wasn't Rose, it was Sullivan. Handballs it out. Layla Arnold can kick in the vicinity of the square. Mopping up there was Lang. She's looked lively again, but kick will be cut off. And it'll be Lana Davy to kick it in, looking to play on. Not many leads presenting. They've got a whole bit of a paddock in that right side of the pocket. Mark taken. Strong mark taken there from her teammate. It was a nice mark from Ariel Cannell. We'll see on that replay there, just a nice strong jump at it. Thanks to, the, thanks to Move Food for that replay. And she'll look to get Clarence's second. So she'll meander in and swift across the goal face. So 0-0-0, zero, 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 the Tigers plays 1-5-11. Clarence, thanks to Brighton's Best Bakehouse. I think uh, Clarence is just reading the bowl a bit better at the moment. Often times when the King Tigers are kicking out, um, Clarence are just reading their, the bowl better. Um, Tigers finding themselves just slightly out of position a few times, mm. um, which I think is hurting them, and that's why there's been so many repeat inside 50s for Clarence, because they're just turning it over. Absolutely. So we're seeing a few little skewer, skewer errors under pressure. That ball was definitely out just before, and that was a huge high kick. But the umpire, I really like their ability to keep it going, keep it flowing. But when we let one high go through, we're going to start to see it happen a little bit more as the frustration continues to build. And we just saw some stats. So Kimbra's had the one inside 50s, and Clarence had had 11. And with the uh, um, siren very, very close to end this first quarter, I would anticipate gosh they're punching it through look at the aggression love that I, I would like to see Kimber Tigers really starting to jump stand in front of the Roos we're coming behind a fair bit um, and I'm just watching the two girls from the other side of the field one from Clarence one from Tigers who are actually schoolmates and they're in the same class together so it must feel pretty strange to play against someone that you go to school with but all very exciting stuff um, we'll take a short break and then we'll come back with our thoughts and queries before the second quarter. This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the old Bridges Brothers building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. 
phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day. Welcome back to second quarter action here at North Hobart Oval. It's currently King of Tigers trailing by 11 points, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 5, 11, thanks to Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard. We'll get some thoughts on that first quarter for me, Em. Yeah, I thought it was a good contest to start with. It's hot footy, uh, but Clarence definitely got on top. Just using the ball better and reading the ball better, I think is what it came down to. Just wanting it more as well. They just looked like they came ready to play. Well, it sounds like they heard you, Em, because they are bursting out of this pack to get the first forward entry for the second quarter. Tigers heard you loud and clear, and they said, you know what, we want it too. And we will show you by getting first to the ball. They have numbers around the back. Michaela Lang is dangerously lurking and she is going in with everything that she has. Jumping in low, was that a bit low? Kind of looked like it to me. Incorrect disposal, 3v1. Ruse are gonna get round, they're gonna say, you can have a crack, but we're still here standing on the mark. Mood food replay shows that, yes, indeed, it was holding the ball. So long kick out the wing, just nearing the 50. Didn't quite get the execution. Quick toe poke to the next uh, Tigers player, but as of course, Ruse have numbers around the ball. Jumping into traffic there was Tigers player, and I like the little snatch that I just saw. I like a little sass around the football bow. Definitely is heating up in the kitchen here. North Hobart Oval, a hurried kick out there from Costello. 
Dribbling kick forward towards the goal face. Will not make it. We'll see another behind, so. Two goal margin now. Play on! So, one kick down the ground through the hands of Verdell. Again, they'll go quickly through the corridor here, the Ruse. Kick will just evade. Getting to that one there was Van Driesem. And short and sharp hands. Being able to get out. It's a tight contest at the moment. So, again, another ball up. Good tap down there from Batchelor. Kick inside. Tilliard can try and run onto it. Can't make anything of it. It'll trickle outside of the 50. Yeah, two, two toe poke attempts work out well. Three make it. And now the King Retires can try and run off the half back line. Pushing into the forward line. Walls there. She got taken. It's hot in the telephone box at the moment. And two Ruse taking down. Imogen Verd out. Maggie. Yeah, look, I'm getting so into this game because you can see that she just hit a brick wall and that was a beautifully executed tackle for a ball up by the umpire. Didn't quite get the hand to it, but the umpire says play on. That's kicking in danger. That's got to be Tiger's ball. You can't do that. Tiger's ball need to go quickly now and they want to see leads. I can't see too much happening. I've got one strong lead coming through the middle. Will that find the target? Bodies go flying, but it's Tiger's ruse. They couldn't quite take it, but they got the first mark. Push in the back, umpire says no. Push off the ball, umpire says no. Quick hands goes out to a ruse. Scramble play around here. They get the ball away. Push, shove. Back on it. Bodies flying. Quick hand ball at the back. Tries to kick it, but it only hits another player. Everyone's running onto it. It's high footy, but Tigers need to capsulate. Another kick off the ball. They have been told at quarter time, at any cost, you keep that ball moving, and it is working to their advantage. Very intense stuff for the first couple minutes of this game, and opposite to what we saw in the last game, it is in the Tigers' 50. They are definitely switched gears, and they are ready to show why they're meant to be in this grand final. Tap not really decisively won by anyone, but Michaela Lang is scrambling around the back of the ball, pushing the back. She gets away with this, does a handball to herself, but will she find someone to dispose it to? Fend off, kicks for goals, heads on through, but it slides to the right for a behind. The Tigers won't be disappointed now. They've got two behinds. I'm sure they'd prefer goals, but they're on the scoreboard. So 0-2-2 to Clarence, 1-5-11, with four minutes past. Full back, kick straight into the hot spot. That's a dangerous spot. We've spoken about that before, Em. Mm, yeah, it's good to see um, King just having some opportunities now. You know, they're there and eventually they will come off. And it, so it's good to see the, you know, momentum shift. Absolutely. But they've still managed. Um, a lot of the umpires aren't getting too involved. They're really ensuring the free-flowing game. This is the marks that you need to take, but it was cleaned up by a backdoor option. Take the mark by Lang. We've spoken about her at the start of the game. Yeah, she's everywhere at the moment, Lang, uh, doing an incredible job. This is looking promising. We've got numbers around the ball. That's a smart little punch, but it's gone to the boundary. Is it in? No. I think Lang might have started the first quarter, maybe off the half back. It seems like they've moved her into the midfield, which seems to have been a good decision. I agree. Feeling a little bit more forceful. Mate, very impactful around the ball. Bucks go up for a tap. Tigers win it down. No one in particular. Drop the ball. No, can't quite pick it up. That's been a theme of today in general. No one seems to be picking up maybe a bit dewier than what we think it is. So inside the forward 50 for the Tigers through the legs of Harper. Just lurking around the ball there was Sullivan Harper again, keeping it in. She got tackled. It's a nice tackle and will be rewarded as well. Now, man, Ollie Franks out there has rewarded it. And it'll be a free kick going to Hagen. Driving kick inside forward 50. Lang! Looked lively early. Here's Matilda Lang. She's been here, there, and everywhere. Em just mentioned she's drifted down in that midfield forward role after coming off the half back and she's got a thumping kick we saw that just before so let's see if she can get the Tigers
first goal on the scoreboard. Will take some sort of kick. It's a difficult angle. Lang trickles in with a banana. <laughs> and the Tigers celebrate that well-earned opportunity. They have come out firing this quarter and there is nothing that's going to be left in the tank at the end of this game. Look at that celebration as we get the mood food. Replay back up on the board. Stop. Prop. Turn the ball. And look at the spin on that. <laughs> that's <perfect>. incredible. <laughs> I think you said in the previous game, Em, like these are some of the things that you couldn't do if you, you tried, you couldn't yeah. practice them. <laughs> yeah. It's just that on the adrenaline with all the emotion that fuels the kick and it was well in, uh, well deserved by Lang. So, in and out again there is Sullivan. I've another free kick paid. To Mia Sullivan. You driving kick just on the eve of 50 won't it will bounce in there eventually off the hands of Tumney and a kick out just over the head of Sullivan again Harper oversteps ball nearly not it wasn't paid in the end but a strong tackle on Elise Batchelor Elsie Batchelor we'll see a ball up we go do it all again so Batchelor taps it down Hot footy in there again. Harper, she's been here, there and everywhere. And taking her is Garay. So, Bachelor can tap it down over Verdu. I've nearly ran onto it again there, Bachelor. Just over steps. Hot footy to win. Van Driesman. Pressure coming from the Ruse. It was off the hands of Ivory. And now they can go again. That little pocket rocket, Clark. Harper, it wasn't Harper in fact, it was Hart, got spun around, Richardson's lurking out the back, taken without it, free kick. Richardson is going to line up for her second goal of the afternoon here, we'll just look on the Mood Food replay, and unfortunately there, yeah, Ruby James just taking her without the ball, Richardson on a reasonably easy angle, uh, reasonable angle here. Will look to get Clarence a second, and that's what she does. Two goals to Millie Richardson, two goals to Clarence. And they'll extend their lead out to nine. And you would say that was probably against the momentum that the game's been going in. Uh, this this quarter has been owned by Kingra so far, I think. Most of it's been played in their forward 50. So for Clarence to turn the ball over and then actually... Um, capitalise on that and convert uh, will be really important, I think. Absolutely. And look, I spoke about it a bit in the other games and very partial to a defender. That was clumsy, but it was also desperate. She really thought that she was going to get possession and she didn't want to risk anything. So unlucky mistake. But the ball comes back out and Tigers have another chance with still oh. six minutes oh. on the competition, on the quarter. Mark not taken. It was a smart kick out on the side of the boot. She falls into trouble. She's tackled without it. She gets it over. Another long driving kick. Didn't quite get in front. We have a second opportunity. Will she make the same mistake? Oh, oh great kick smother. smothered by the defender in Play Tigers. On. Desperate stuff. Quick Play handball out the, the back wasn't taken. Scrambly ball. Everyone's on ground level. One thing that I'm noticing about this game that I haven't quite seen in the other games is I peer out into the grandstand. And whilst there's a lot of people, I'm hearing the voice from them. Mm. And there's nothing better than when They're you're playing vocal. and everyone screams, that's ball. You love it when your crowd gets around. You step on goal from the stoppage. Umpire's given two big thumbs up. And Richardson has scored a goal. Another goal. Three goals so far. She is one to watch this game. Great start. Just look here at the front of the stoppage. She gets the crumb, hand pass off. In fact, it might not I have been I think that was Alani Richardson. Houston there. I think it was Houston as well. Ah, captain. It's a good pick up there from you, M. I think it was Houston. She just got the crumb in time and got it on the boot. As we go back into the middle, bursting out again. Clarence, back to back inside 50s here. Running onto it as Ivory. Oversteps the ball. Hand pass off. Taken in the tackle was Houston who just scored that goal. It's a hot footy in the Kingborough defensive 50. 
Lang mopping up off half back. Might have been drifted back into that role. Again off the hands there of Davey. But they're going to go inside forward 50 via Macy Clark. Lang taking hand pass away. And again we'll go to that outer boundary. And the boundary line will be their friend on that occasion. So you see there five inside 50s to four. Clarence capitalising. Actually had eight scoring shots to three scoring shots there this game. I'm loving the communication from the umpires to the to the girls to be really clear and concise when it's play on or not. It's made for a really free-flowing, exciting game, yes, getting okay. those snaps on. That's a really good attempt to try and tackle. But these girls are very good at kicking at any angle and at all angles. That's the front and centre position oh. we wanted, but she's smarter than that. She gets the handball off, and do they capitalise? Yes, they do. Clarence have a game plan, and... Houston has scored another, the skipper, for 44 games and was part of the rep team for the 2023 season. She's showing Tigers just how good she is. What I think Clarence are doing really well is, yeah, using each other. Um, they are, they're aware of where their teammates are, you know, whether they're out the back, whether they're coming running through, you know. I think that their awareness is awesome and that is also allowing them to put a lot of blocks on that I've noticed, mm. um, giving their teammates time and space. They're looking out for each other. It's really good to see. It's classic, those simple little things. So you see the ball go up for a centre bounce. Tigers getting hands to it. Umpire says, no, you didn't get the hands to it, actually. You attempted. Ruse ball. Nice long driving kick. That's gone straight into the 50 mark, not taken. Play on, Quick little handball, hands. as you said, and they just know where they are, where they're supposed to be. All clear. But that one went for a behind. Great play, though. Really quick forward entry from that um, centre bounce bow. Yeah, quick hands. and Again, it was Richardson. You got the hand pass away and the non-preferred. She's looking lively Play up on. forward there and definitely going to need someone to go on her and shut her down. Mm. It's a long kick out. We got cut off there from Hart. Play on, the got skippers. Hand pass got away. Handing it off there. Drilling kick towards goal from Tilliard on the goal line is Lang who kicked that banana. Check side is... Looked really lively to 22 point margin here. Mark was dropped in the end from Sullivan. We'll see. Another throw in. 1 2 8 plays 4 6 30. Thanks to Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard here. We've had another real swing in momentum this quarter. This first part of it belonged to Kingra, but I would say the next part has really belonged to Clarence. Absolutely, with only a minute or so left on the board. They're going to have only a few more opportunities. Here we go. Oh, Perfectly picked up from out the back of the contest. Defenders just not in front, but we'll get another replay, as you can see how quick she has orientation around the goals in Richardson. I really think Kingborough are going to have to do something about Millie Richardson because not only she's got three now, but I reckon she'd have a handful of goal assists as well. She's kicked a bag herself, but she's been handing them off mm. to, to her runners that have been coming down yeah, the side. Uh, and she's hurting the Tigers at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. How about the non-preferred pick up and, yeah. and kick? <laughs> I mean, just the ambidextrous skills that we've seen today, the, the ability to just have a go, put it on any hand or any foot, it's really, really um, inspirational. A little bit hot, a little bit heavy out there now. We're starting to see some frustration. Ball goes up again for the Rucks. Tigers get a first hands to it. Battling through the ruse. She's going to get a handball to it. That's a strong little pick up, but it only goes as far as little number uh, Clarence Clark. Scrambly work here. Not long left to the siren goes. And then we will be underway for the first half will be done. Girls using their bodies. That is fantastic work. Quick little handballs. We've seen this before. It's a long driving kick. Who's out the back of the contest? It is Lang. Let's it go over for a behind. So Matilda Lang to bring it back in or she won't. We'll be hearing the siren go for the first half 
completion here in the last grand final of the day. Under 16s around grand final. Kimber Black versus Clarence. All brought to you by Duff TV. M, if you just want to run through our goal kickers quickly and we'll head to a short break. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got Matilda Lang with the one goal for um, Kimbra, who is, has also been really instrumental down back for them in the last bit of that quarter. She's picked off a few of Clarence's goals. Um, as well as that, Millie Richardson, who we mentioned earlier, she's got three. And Alani Houston with two quick ones in a row, I think it was there. Um, yeah, great stuff by Clarence. Also great stuff by Kingbra. It was good that they were able to convert when they did have the um, momentum at the start. So, yeah, hoping for a nice even second half again. We will be back shortly. We go inside 50 again here, Clarence. Kick was good. Worked out. Handed it off to Ivory. She's got an open goal. Does Houston. And she'll centre it to a teammate. And Millie Richardson can look to kick the first of the afternoon. Mood food replay. Watch as she does a quick little kick out. Nice little handball. Sorry. Kick straight through. That's the first goal of the game. Millie Richardson's actually kicked 40 goals in the home and away season this year. So... That's that's a really good effort. Um, so yeah, looking like she's on early. Scramble. I've a rundown tackle to really set the tone. It was laid on third out. And we'll have Play on. that was Lily Harper there with that tackle. She's been really important these first sort of ten minutes of this game, applying some really great pressure in the midfield. Great kick there as well. It'll end up in the hands of Charlotte Brumby. Probably a kick away from goal. Lead kick out the back. Richardson hands it off. There up there was Lang. She's looked lively again, but kick will be cut off. And it'll be Lana Davey to kick it in, looking to play on. Not many leads presenting. They've got a whole bit of a paddock in that right side of the pocket. Mark taken. Strong mark taken there from her teammate. It was a nice mark from Ari. Make it. And now the King Retires can try and run off the half-back line. Pushing into the forward line. Walls there. She got taken. It's hot in the telephone box at the moment. And two Roos taking down Imogen Verdell. Maggie. Yeah, look, I'm getting so into this game because you can see that she just hit a brick wall and that was a beautifully executed tackle for a ball up by the umpire. Didn't quite get the hand to it, but the umpire says play on. In this grand play final. On. Tap not really decisively won by anyone, but Michaela Lang is scrambling around the back of the ball, pushing the back. She gets away with this, does a handball to herself, but will she find someone to dispose it to? Fend off, kicks for goals, heads on through, but it slides to the right for a behind. The Tigers won't be just... Going to Hagen, driving kick inside, forward 50, Lang. Looked lively early, Is Matilda Lang. She's been here, there and everywhere. Em just mentioned she's drifted down in that midfield forward roll after coming off the half back, and she's got a thumping kick, we saw that just before. So let's see if she can get the Tigers first goal on the scoreboard. We'll take some sort of kick. It's a difficult angle. Lang trickles in with a banana. <laughs> and the Tigers celebrate that well-earned opportunity. They have come out firing this quarter and there is nothing that's going to be left in the tank at the end of this game. Look at that celebration as we get the... Rocket Clark. Harper. It wasn't Harper, in fact, it was Hart. Got spun around. Richardson's lurking out the back. Taken without it. Free kick. Richardson is going to line up for her second goal of the afternoon here. We'll just look on the Mood Food replay. And unfortunately, there, yeah, Ruby James just taking her without the ball. Richardson on a reasonably easy angle. Uh, reasonable angle here. We'll look to get Clarence a second, and that's what she does. Two goals to Millie Richardson, two goals to Clarence. And they'll extend their lead out to nine. And you would say that was probably against the momentum that the game's been going in. Uh, Mothered by the defender in Tigers. 
Desperate stuff. Quick Final handball out the back handball. wasn't taken. Scrambly ball. Everyone's on ground level. One thing that I'm noticing about this game that I haven't quite seen in the other games is I peer out into the grandstand. And whilst there's a lot of people, I'm hearing the voice from them. Mm. And there's nothing better than when They're you're playing vocal. and everyone screams, Final. that's ball. You love it when your crowd gets around. You step on goal from the stoppage. Umpire's given two big thumbs up. And Richardson has scored a goal. Another goal. Three goals so far. She is one to watch this game. Great start. Well, Clarence capitalising. Actually had eight scoring shots to three scoring shots there this game. I'm loving the communication from the umpires to the to the girls to be really clear and concise when it's play on or not. It's made for a really free-flowing, exciting game, yes, getting those snaps on. That's a really good attempt to try and tackle. But these girls are very good at kicking at any angle and at all play angles. On. That's the front and centre position oh. we wanted, but she's smarter than that. She gets a handball off, and do they capitalise? Yes, they do. Parents have a game plan, and... Houston has scored another, the skipper. Which really... Welcome back to second half action here, live from North Hobart Oval. Three of the three grand finals have been played here in the women's division. We've had 214 games, and this is the last women's game we've had here today in the under 16. It's currently Clarence in front, and well, the games looked to open up a little bit here. M. Yeah, we're hoping for a bit more of an even sort of second half. The um, first quarter definitely belonged to Clarence, but in the second, Kimbra did have their time and they did score from it, but uh, hopefully they can sustain that a little bit longer in the second half. Absolutely, you can see on this, the screen here that we've got very serious faces from the coaching staff from the Tigers and I can only imagine being the Tigers coach, I'd remind my, the girls what they've got, to, how capable are, and now they just need to put all the pieces together. So we go for the ball up. Tigers get the first tap down to it. Scrambly, as we always see in the middle, diving on the ball. New Ruse seem to have the numbers. No one taking a clear possession, but Michaela Lang, she busts through two. She sends a long driving kick. Will we'll be able to pick it up? There's a... Oh, as she just evades the pole. That was so quick. We saw Rose. We haven't seen much of Rose. That's uh, who we started the talked about at the start of the game with 104 Rocks games and a huge Still repertoire hands. of First things to her game. Yeah. It'd be really great to see her more involved. So we're going to see a stoppage just in front of the goals. Dangerous area for the Clarence Roos. Can Tigers epitomise quick handball, but the umpires called it back for a Stand. something or other. That was the umpire, uh, the non-officiating umpire you. actually. Maybe a push off the ball or something like that. But it doesn't matter because Lang said, I've got this. And she's tried oh. to take on maybe a bit off more than what she can chew. But she's back again. She'll take it off anyone that gets yep. in her way. She's able to get a quick handball out. Hand. Met heavily with a quick tackle. Got the hands out. Another hands running onto the ball. She's going to keep going. We've got numbers around the ball. Another Ooh. long driving kick through the centre of the ground. It falls a little bit over the top. But they're working hard. The crews know what to do. They're a well-oiled machine down there. But... So are the Tigers as she brings the ball to ground and the umpire will have it. The girls will suck in a bit of air because they know there is only two more halves of the grand final. Ball goes up. Tap down. It was well run there. Well won there from Kingborough. We'll have another passage of play where the ball just trickles around a little, little bit. It's been the flavour of the day, that's for sure, as we see... Final pursuit there is Tilliard for Clarence. 
pushes her opponent off there. And now she can run. Drilling kick inside, forward 50. The lead just evading Richardson. She's going to have to work back to get it. King Britta Fence looking to mop up. A heavy bump was made. And again, the hand pass out. Alana Houston, or I should say Hart, will have a shot on goal and will miss that one. So an even 30-point margin here. 1, 2, 8, plays 5, 8, 38, thanks to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard. We see Kingbra again run out of their defence. Long kick down the line over the head of Tillyard again. We'll see Tillyard go back and get it. A little bit of a basketball slap. Got a kick away in the end. Houston's all by herself. I should say hard again. It's a snap on goal. It's going to come back. And another point for Clarence. That's their ninth point. I think it was Hart there. Yeah, that's her fourth behind, actually, for Hart. So you'd think she'd maybe got one coming. <laughs> mm. Been a bit unlucky a couple of times. Yep, looking to play on quite quickly. A big run out the back. Trying to hit that wide and get that distance. But like you said, Em, in the second quarter, the Roos orientation and ability to read the ball has really prevailed and it's got them the advantage every time. Scrambly ball at we've seen at the ground level, but it's scrambly because there are so many hands on it. They've locked that in. Umpire says my ball. I think what some of the Clarence girls are doing quite well too is uh, just tapping the ball and not taking clean possession until they've got a nice bounce and they're sort of just playing it forward until they can really take possession of the ball and it's quite clever. Absolutely. That wall that the Clarence Roos have set up on the 50 line is really helping them have a multiple repeat entries but Lang, we've called that name so much today, has got she's possession of the ball and she's going to go down back the same way that it comes from three times in a row. Tigers not in front of their players at all. Ball comes trickling back, dangerous around the face of goal. We really need to see a switch of play here from the Tigers. It's not working on that far side from uh, the commentary box. We need them to bring it a little bit more on the inside. Oh, nearly yep. Play on. Getting to the ball first, but they're out the back of the contest. Incorrect disposal. Finally, a win for Tigers. She'll push back off the mark. Looks to send it yep. down the same wing yet again. Front and centre. These are the simple things that work. Run around the man on the mark. Send the kick. It wasn't great, but it got to someone. Not mm, 15. Maybe a short 15. We'll take it. She takes her time. She's scanning the field. Give me a lead she wants. Long kick up. Clarence have front position. Tigers put the block on. Kick off the ground. Tiger's not quite there. Of course it is. It's Lang. She dices the ball. She hits it through. We've got a dash. Come on, Rose. Come on, use your experience. She gets a foot to the ball. She's fighting hard. She doesn't have it. Quick kick. Quick tackle. Back into the middle. How Rose have defended this is really astounding. Come on, Tigers. Fighting for the ball. That's great defensive efforts from Smith. Great work, Smith. Now we've got a shot on goal. Could this be Tigers' opportunity to set their, so their tone for the third quarter? Yep. Little run up, doesn't quite have the distance, all the mark paid. Rose looks dangerous, dives onto the ball. Smith picks it up again, smothered by a Tigers player. Girls are going for it everywhere, no communication. Rose looks a little bit rocky getting up. She's limping, that's not a good sign. That's a great uh, interception of the ball. Here we have Gari, Gare. She's going to have a shot on goal. Nope, she's going to handball it off to her teammate in Lang. Play on, touch ball. <laughs> Incorrect disposal. It's Tiger's ball. They've got to make something Sweet. out of this. Yeah, Josephine Rosie actually playing injured this afternoon. Obviously, the Beakley medalist of 2023. Play she's on. Doing a good job to keep her team to try and keep back in this. So we see the scrambling ball out. Another bump laid there that's you, that's from Tillyard. Yeah. The intensity's just lift up a bit. She's got her own ball. The two number 10s go at it. Mia Sullivan and Tillyard. Sullivan comes out victor on that occasion. Quick high kick in the middle of North Hobart Oval. Running onto that one there I think was Tillyard again. But failing to come 
Down with it. Hand pass was good away there from Heroys. Yep. Driving kick inside. 50. The mark was dropped. It's a scrambling ball. Mopping up there is going to be Ava Smith. And we'll see. A fresh airy nearly there. <laughs> it's a hot ball at the moment. Out. The umpire is just letting Fly this one go, which is really good. Verdow gets Fly the dribbling on. kick forward. Osorius has a little bit of a fresh airy. The ball eventually gets out of the 50. It's going to come back in. Long thumping kick. It's going to bounce to the goal line. Rosie pushes out of it. It's going to be a push free kick to Harper, I think it might be. It was definitely there. It wasn't a free kick to Harper, it was to Costello. It was a definite free kick there. Play on. You can hear the crowd in that. They are disappointed with that call. Tiger's doing well to keep the ball in there forward 50 at the moment. Uh, mm. Stayed down there for a while, which yep. is good. Coming out this way. Absolutely. Ball goes up. Play on. Tigers get the touchdown to it. Didn't quite get the hands that they would have liked. Is that below the knees? No. Umpire says you were just down there. Yep. Ball up. <laughs> Tigers get a fingertips to it. Coming through, crashing Play through on. the pack. She's held without the football. I'm really liking this umpire, Ollie Franks. He's line. clear and concise as we just spoke about. He, he's you. doing a really good job. Mm. Great communication to the players as well. Not the kick that they want have wanted, but is this the opportunity? Yes, it is! Our Limpine Rosie, our 104 games, Beakley medal winner, 60 goals this season, played in the Div 1 SFLW competition. She has shown what she is made of. Warrior, and we will cross over to the Mood Food replay so you can get another look at just how quick she is. Looks like she's out of play, grabs it, goes! celebrates with a bit of a limp <laughs> ball comes back into the middle and Tigers are feeling rejuvenated they are not out of this game yet crazier things have happened you've said before Em yeah they really need to hold on to this period of momentum that they've got going for them at the moment Cannell got the clearance in the end there for the Ruse hand pass nearly was an option kick got away in the direction of Houston, I think it might be. Play on, got a handball. It was actually Hart. Free kick going the way of Kingbra. So, can they conjure Stand. something off the half-back line here? Play on. I'll definitely give it a fair old roost in the direction of Lana Burke. Drops a chest mark. We'll go back yep. and get it again. Hand pass away to a teammate and Hart. Play on. There it is, Hart. Sorry, I should say. And has a... Bit of a scrappy kick out on the full. Great, de oh. great defensive efforts by Sullivan just then. To, just to get something as she was lining up to take the kick, get any kind of body part on her hips, and that really veered the kick to go Play for a, um, a boundary kick in from Tigers. Hitting to a pretty heated contest, and it didn't get the traction that she was after. Disappointing, and it happens. Will this finally be Hayley Hart's goal of the day? She's kicked four behind, so... Let's Flash see how this one goes. Sun's in her eyes. Yours on the kick. You think she has the distance covered? Bit of an angle towards goal. Lining up. Ball comes off the right boot, oh. and it was always going behind. I think she just kind of stabbed at it. Mm. So Tigers are going to reset. I think when you do kick, you know, a few behinds in a row, you do start, you start to put the pressure on yourself and you think, I've got to kick one now. It's the mental element of this game that we forget. There's yeah. a lot of like the confidence to, to have a go and put your body on the line or to keep going. Now this is the emotion that we're talking about. We're getting a bit of pushy and shabby. And that's all from the adrenaline coming in because this game game means so much to these girls. Ruse get a fist to it. Play on. Out the back. Cute little, little handball. Play Long on. high kick. Doesn't really go anywhere in particular, but it's a foot race. Michaela Lang looks absolutely dominating. She takes a bounce. 
She takes a little, another bounce. She dances around everybody. Go. Does it go in? Oh, oh and it drips to that pole. Going out of bounds is probably not a bad outcome for Kingbro because now they're going to have a throw up right in their Ford 50. But my goodness, imagine if that went through. That would have been one of the best goals I've ever seen, I reckon. <laughs> that would have been absolute reward for effort. And the positions were right by her teammates. They were front and centre. They all got to that ball. Ball throw in. One down by Ruse. Easy handball out to the side. Didn't quite take it. Pressure's on. Tackle's wrapped up. Didn't quite stick it. Another pressure. Handball got out. It is 1v1. Push in the back. Nope, not quite. Wrapped up and that's ball. You had time. So it's going to be Tiger's kick. They need to move quickly now. There's no, not much left of this quarter. Couple minutes. Handball off. Drives it into the top of the box. Where's Rosie going to get it? No, she quite didn't. Kick off the ground. Goes back to the top of the 50. Smith has a chance, but she comes into trouble. Kicking in danger. Umpire says no stress. That's a push in the back. Umpire agrees. Thanks, umpire. I feel supported now. <laughs> <laughs> Ruse will do something with it. They're going to kick it into a very dangerous area, and that was intercepted by Tigers. Picked up by another Tigers. Held without the ball. Umpire says, doesn't matter. Quick run through the centre of the ground. Kicking through the corridor. Nice little tap, like you said, M. Oh. They've got the momentum. Big handball goes across. Waits. Waits again. Oh. She can't kick it on left. She kicks it on her right. And that goes through. Incredible goal. From end to end, and Clarence score that goal. <laughs> if I flick over to the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard for the third quarter with a couple minutes left, it is Tigers with 2 2 14 and Clarence 6 11 47. Check out this replay from Mood Food. Beautiful long kick, momentum going. Draws the player in, handballs out the back, and does what she does best. Shake and bake. Mm. Shake and bake. I like that. <laughs> so, back into the middle here. Kimber Wing, another hit down. Not sure what the inside 50 count is, but certainly favouring Clarence at this point, I reckon. Go for another ball up. Just not too far from where we left off. Two minutes exactly left here. The countdown is on. Davy. Good shove. She can soccer it in the vicinity of the 50. Nice meet. There from the Kingra player. She's taken with the ball. Maybe a free kick was necessary for holding the man, but umpire knows a little bit more than what I do. She's getting shoved off there was Curtis. Shake and bake again there from Richardson. Shot on goal was good from Houston. And we'll see another, but oh, it's actually stayed in. So, kick up and under. Houston, dropping mark. Tied across the boundary. Hand pass over was good there from Curtis. It's a hot ball at the moment. Harper's in and under. Harper taken without it. Richardson handing it off. It's a tough position for Kingbra. It's all... Being trapped in here. Lang taken without it. I think it was Lang or it possibly could have been. I think it was. Actually, it was Gabby White there. So they're looking to square this off. Liv Martin's going to have to do the dirty work on the line. Not an easy shot, line. this one. So wouldn't this just bring the house down and extend the lead? Liv Martin. Left foot kick is on its way. We'll miss. So, the Tigers holding an all-important lead at the moment. It'll be a 34-point lead here if we can just run through our goal kickers quickly, Em. Yeah, absolutely. So, we've still we got another one for Kingbra in that quarter from Josephine Rose. Um, Millie Richardson is now on four goals. Um, and I believe that was all for the quarter. Um, so, yeah, a couple goals there. Might have been a... Um, uh, even pretty even quarter as far as goal scoring goes. 
Um, but yeah, some some really good goals actually, especially Amelia Richardson's shake and bake there at the end. But also um, Josephine Rose had one peppering for a while there, I reckon, down for so she's done well to convert. So we'll take a quick break here for the last game of the day. Thanks to Duff TV. We'll be back shortly. This program brought to you by IGA, where the locals matter. Having trouble finding an after-hours doctor for your family? Sometimes we need medical assistance when everything is closed. In the Old Bridges Brothers Building, 71 Bathurst Street, after-hours Dr Hobart is open every day till 10pm. Phone for an appointment or book online. And for added convenience, you'll also find your Hobart chemist also open until 10. When minor accidents and illness happen, we're here for you. After Hours Dr Hobart and your Hobart chemist, open till 10pm every day. Welcome back to the last quarter here, live from North Hobart Oval. It's been a pleasure to have your company throughout the day today. It's been a pleasure to have Maggie Goldsmith and Emily Burrows in the commentary box as well. It's been a great day of women's footy here at North Hobart Oval. And this game has been an absolute cracker. We've seen some amazing goals and some amazing non-goals that mm. nearly were goals, but mm -hmm. um, overall a really good display of footy. And we were just talking, I think we're going to do it at the end, but I'm already too excited. Some amazing umpiring by our man, as you can see him right there, Ollie. He's been a brilliant umpire, and if you can listen out for his calls in the game, they're super educational and super informative. So a bit of a special shout-out to him and that super consistent, um, accurate umpiring. Just letting the game flow on. He's really set the tone for a professional environment. Um, so super exciting. 
I like pranks. <laughs> so, about to get underway here. The last quarter of the STJFL Under 16's grand final. Ollie Franks will throw the ball up to get us underway. So, quick kick out. There, hand pass. Yep. We'll see. You go in the vicinity of the 50 there. Richardson meets it out, handing it off to a teammate. Shakes and bakes around. Charlotte Ivory snap on goal. It's going to land. Excellent goal. So Clarence Roos are leaping into grand final success. Oh my, did you just hear her? You just heard it. She said, I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> but sometimes you see, and you'll see it a lot, and I'm sure Kimber Tigers will do it too. When you see one person do something, like the shake and bake, the rest of the girls will follow. So she's following the lead in her co-player, Richardson, to do the same thing, get on the right foot, put the snap on it. And I reckon coach for um, the Clarence Roos, Nick Davey would have said, girls, finals, just have a crack. Enjoy this opportunity. Tigers get the tap down and it's a beautiful tap down wide. Kicked off the ground, but it only went as far as the next player. Foot race onto it, scrambly ball. No one's picking up. Everyone's putting the block on, which is nice to see. Didn't really have possession, quite a high contact, but Ollie, he's happy. Keep going, mate. Kick along the ground, meets another Rui player. She turns around, remembers which way she's going. Still remains possession, long, driving, kick over the top of the contest. And it goes for a behind. And that's what's having a crack is, taking the competition on, risking it all in. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see some of these attempts. You know, there's been a, there has been a few non-goals. Goals. As you can see, Clarence have kicked 13 behinds. But in saying that, they have been some pretty good non-goals. <laughs> and it's awesome to see them getting the opportunity. Absolutely. So a little bit of fight at the top of the 50 as Clarence want to really keep it in and take every opportunity they can. Richardson looks dangerous. She's got the body on. She dives on the back. A little bit of a push in the back, but it doesn't matter because someone else was there to grab and snap and score. Hart, skipper, Houston skipper, sorry, for her third goal of the day. Houston skipper with 44 gains, part of the rep team and has been really dynamic and leadership um, base for her team today. Good body on the ball there from those two. Followed up by Ivory, just to get their hands away to the skipper. I mentioned it before. I just think Clarence's awareness of each other mm -hmm. and where they are on the field um, is what has put them so far in front in this game. They've had runners coming through as they, you know, the contest has been going in their forward 50, and that's where their goals have come from a lot of the time, mm -hmm. um, and it's been excellent. So, in the middle, it's time for enjoyment here for the Roos. Game well and truly out of reach, you'd like to think. Backtracking there was Bachelor. Drilling kick inside forward 50, a little bit too hot to handle there for Ivory. Lane bursting out there again. She's met heavily there from Davey. And again, the Roos just are going to bound in. Davey, dribbling kick long. Richardson, what can she conjure up? Unfortunately... Overruns the ball, Atherton, she's taken in the tackle from Richardson, we'll see. I think it might be a ball up here, deep inside the forward 50 for the Roos. A little bit of push and shove going at the back of the contest with the Roos and the Tigers because they're playing for everything here. They don't want to leave anything, un any stone unturned. Snap on, go! And it heads in for the shade. Boundary umpire's ball. I just love the attempts. Like, I mean, it, you get to this point, and if I was Clarence Roos, I'd be doing the same thing. Just have a crack, because why not? If you get on the scoreboard, it's great. If it goes for a behind, you'll reset and do it all over again. Ball comes up. Rucks go out at even tap. No one decisively wins. Ball goes to ground. Snap. Snap is the word of the day. Another goal. To Hart, this time the co-captain for the Clarence Roos, and she'd be stoked with that one. She finally gets her grand final goal that she'd been hoping for. Is it 
Nacho, just hanging out the back of the contest, like you said, M. They're a well-oiled machine. They know if someone goes to ground, you need to stand a metre, two metres away. So Hayley Hart just uh, scored that goal. Is 75 games. She's the captain, was one of the Beakley winners and has had a fair bit of experience with the Div 1 uh, SFLW Clarence Ruse. So shows where her orientation comes from. Smart little handball, driving kick into the 50. Mark beautifully taken with the backup of the Clarence Ruse team. Play on, she's off your line. Another kick into the hot spot. Didn't take it, Richardson. What does she do best? You know it. Dash and shake, shake and what is <laughs> shake and bake. <laughs> <laughs> shake and bake. Dash and I don't know what I was saying. I just get so excited every time she gets around the ball. And the shake she and the bake. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another goal. How many goals in total is that for Richardson? That is five. Wow, she'd be happy with that. Yeah. Smart little stoppage. I just feel like the theme for Tigers is maybe we haven't capitalised on those midfield stoppages. Does seem like it's getting one um, on the Roo side um, each time. Yeah, I feel like Kimber may be just slightly getting sucked into the contest a little bit. Clarence have their players on the outside mm. that they're passing to and then the Kimber players are sucked in, like I said, and they're not on their man who are mm -hmm. sort of drifting out. Lane bursts through the contest. Quick dribbling kick away there. Picking up there was Arnold. She can rebound off the half-back line and really set them up. The skipper in Harper. Yeah. Oh, skip a bit. She's definitely been a leader out on that field today. Another kick inside 50. Picking up there was Atherton for the t uh, the Tigers. And we'll see another ball up there. Ivory just reeling that one in. It's been a convincing display here from the Roos. Absolutely. 2-2, 14 to 10, 13, 73. Thanks to the Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard. The runner almost getting in the way there. We see Davey pick it up. Dribbling kick inside 50. Just bounces over the head of a teammate. Shoving her there was Houston. Picking up there was Tumney. The kick out. And then the tap on there was from Ruby James. Davey. We'll end up back with it again. She's been really lively as well. Kick inside forward 50. Richardson, I think it might be. Dribbling it on. Houston. In fact, it was Harper. Harper will get it back again. Hands it off. Chip kick out from Cannell. It's going to be a high up and under ball. And Richardson. I think it's Richardson. No, it's going to be Haley Hart to line up for the Clarence Rose to get their 11th of the day. She's kicked one goal, four to speak of. She obviously kicked that last goal and she'll line up for a second today, Hayley Hart. Kick will be on the way and... Slight, well, slightly overcompensated there, wasn't it? Yeah, just off the instep of the shoe there. So, a 60-point lead here. Are they going to do the mercy rule next time? I'm not sure if that is played in this, in this uh, finals or this league, but I'm sure the umpires like our man Ollie will figure that one out. Another kick out. There. And pass off from Coombe. And the end will be a long spiralling kick forward. Off the hands. Out the back will be running is Dickenberg. She can't pick it up cleanly. Handing it off there was Wass. Arnold. High up and under kick. Making it a strong contest there again was Houston. She's looked really good today as well, Alani Houston. It's going to be a tough job for, for everyone to pick the best on ground this afternoon. You've got Millie Richardson. Um, Houston played really well, and Lang, of course, for the Tigers. So, see, a bit of a halt in play. and It's a high contact here. Go back to the King for Tigers in Matilda Lang. So Lang's going to stop and prop. She's going out wide, looking for that space, going over the contest, giving her players something to run on to. Smart little tap, but it didn't really go in the way that she wanted. Numbers around the ball. We've got to get the hands out here. Got Almost got the hands held back, fighting for the ball. That's a huge thumping tackle. Girls flying everywhere. Tigers know that how close they are to their goal line, and we can see the desperation in their body language as they dive onto the ball. Touch ball. No mark. Another kick off the ground. Looking pretty good. They've found the space now. Two going for it. 1v1. Stops. Pops onto her left, right foot, sorry. Drives it into the 50 to find 
teammate in Hayley Hart. Play on is called, Hayley Hart chips it in. Finding Richardson, we know how smart Richardson is around the ball. What will she do? She gets the hands off it, spun around a little bit. Another player comes in for a bit of backup. Hayley Hards come out of nowhere again. She goes to the ball, hands balls off, and it hits the boundary. Em, it's tricky with only a couple minutes, uh, six minutes to go. Um, and we know that Tigers are trailing behind. But if you were their coach or their captain, what would you be resonating to your team right now? Yeah, just to enjoy it. Um, grand finals don't come easily. And, um, you know, laugh it up while you're out there and make the most of it. You know, it's meant to be fun. And while it is, you know, it hurts to not win. Um, yeah, like I said, people go their whole lives without making grand finals. So it's just awesome to yeah. even be there. Yeah, absolutely. Might have been a bit of a tackle without the ball there, but it's been propped back into the Clarence Roos attacking 50. Numbers coming in from every angle. Here we are, hard-working Richardson, who goes in for a behind. Bit of a hurried play there, had more time than what she thought. Kick out for Tigers, Bo. Inside 50 to 10 this quarter, thanks to Jerry on the laptop. So, kick out there from Lang. She'll to get it up again. Dances around, high tackle might have been on, hand passes. Boundary line will be the friend on that occasion. So four and a half minutes gone. The Clarence Roos can well and truly enjoy this. Coach Nick Davey, not sure if he coached last year, but they'll be going back to back. The Clarence Roos in the under 15s and the under 16s. Under 15s obviously won it last year against the Tigers. Quick tap out there. We'll see Tilliard burst in. Oh, that's definitely a push in the back. Yeah, over the over the top of Lang there. She gets a kick away. Bachelor tried to smother. Nearly kicked off the ground on that occasion. So it's a hot footy at the moment. Everyone will be a bit fatigued. It's sunny out there, of course. Socket off the ground there from Burke. Picking up there nicely was Clark, I think it was, in the direction of Hart. Richardson as well. She just overruns it. Quick kick out there was from Francis. Francis finds a teammate in Sullivan and we get another smother there from the Tigers. Harper. Quick kick off the ground. It's going to be in the direction of Richardson. What can she conjure up? Happy to see that one over it was Millie Richardson who's kicked five sausage rolls this <laughs> afternoon. Brighton's best bakehouse sausage rolls. If you're looking for somewhere to stop on by, grab a pie, grab a salad roll. We had some at lunch today and they were so, so yummy. Thanks to the best Brighton, the Brighton's best bakehouse scoreboard sponsoring today's day, along with the Mood Food Replay, which I recently asked them to put air in my tyres the other day and they did that for me, which I really appreciated because I didn't know how to do it. So <laughs> back to the game. It is Clavoo's attacking it non-stop. Spinning around, snap on goal! Oh. oh, not quite there, Richardson. Trying to craft it over and make something out of nothing as well. Another behind. I'd love to see a bit of a switch and play from the Tigers who constantly are going out to the George Miller stand. Maybe they need to try a change in direction. We're at the dying end of these uh, stages of these games and it's been just an absolute joy to be a part of all three grand finals as we watch the star do what the star does takes on anyone and everyone with a beautiful accurate kick those are the things we can get excited about those are the things that tigers should be so proud of with their performance today another driving kick i'm feeling good about this passage of play we've got numbers but clarence ruse again are out the back how much pressure can we put on tigers 3v1 Incorrect disposal. This is their time. They've got to grab. They've got to go. Rosie is running to the top of the box. We've got numbers there. Ruse get to it first. Turn. Have a hit. Ruse get to it again. Smart little tap down. This could be an opportunity for the Tigers. And it just hits a behind him. 
yeah, might have been nice of them to have a little goal at the end there, uh, but not to be. But it's good to see that they're still, you know, putting in, even though, you know, the game is probably over from the score from the scoreboard. Absolutely. So, Auxorius to bring it back in. Clarence, they're going to become premiers for the second time in a row. Dashing out there was Tilliard. Not long left on the clock left. It's been a brilliant display here. Pushed off the ball. Auxorius again. Driving kick inside forward. 50. One more goal. Definitely please coach Nick Davey. Sock it off the ground. Lang again. She's going to burst through the middle of North Hobart Oval. One bounce. She's going to run. Two bounces again. Drilling kick inside forward. 50 in the direction of Rose. Can't quite finish it. Her ability to just create space is incredible. Like every time she gets the ball, she's fine space mm. somehow. It's great. I'm really inspired by her confidence and mm. I feel like um, with my own finals lingering, this is what I wanted to get out of today's game is be inspired by the young female footballers, the bright future for Tasmania with an AFLW team on the cusp. Will Lang be a part of that team? Yes, she will. A goal on the siren to reward the many efforts that we have seen this Kimber Tigers outfit put on today. Congratulations to both teams. What an amazing display of football. Everyone should be so proud of themselves, but particularly the Roos, as we can watch them now celebrate their tremendous win. Yeah, no, it was an excellent game from Clarence. Um, just the better team on the day, maybe. It was the nerves from Kingbra, um, but Clarence were just able to just stay composed, do what they know best. Um, and yeah, ultimately ended up with 26 scoring shots for the game, which oh, is wow. a, which is a great effort. Um, mm. And that actually isn't including the ones that went out of bounds as well. So mm. um, yeah, they've done really well. Millie Richardson with five goals and Alani Houston with three. Um, yeah, they've done an excellent job today. Do you want to run us through goal scorers? Yeah, so we've got um, Matilda Lang with two, that late one there going through. Um, Josephine Rose with her one. One more goal. Charlotte Definitely Ivory please coach. Managed to snag one. Millie Richardson, as I mentioned before, with five. Alani Houston with three. And Hayley Hart managed to get one, thankfully, so she's ended up with the one goal. And Bo, any closing comments from today's amazing game? Well, great day for the Clarence Roos. They've gone back to back and they've bounded into August. Uh, with a lot of strong form and a great day for them. It's been a great day to bring all the action from Duff TV. Um, great day of women's footy. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to leave any comments or love heart. This video today, we have absolutely had a pleasure being your commentators mm. and we look forward to seeing you again with the under-18s grand final next week at Blunston. Stay tuned for that and goodbye. What a sensational game of footy. Congratulations to the runners-up, the Kingra Tigers. Bad luck, girls. But the Clarence Roos are the premiers for season 2023 in the Barwicks STJFL. I'd like to get Mark Holmes from the TFUA to come forward and present the umpires with their medals. Mark is the STJFL umpire coach. Mark. Thanks, Tubes.
Uh, congratulations, Clarence, on a great game and great win. And well done to Kingbrook. Commiserations on your loss, but a great, fantastic season. We know you played very well throughout the year, so well done. Um, congratulations to all our umpires in the field. We had Ollie Franks, Ron Franks and Fletcher Horn. On the boundary, we've got Archie George and Jake Rookie. And in the goals, we've got Michael Andrews and Matthew Blackburn. Thank you, everyone. Round of applause for our umpires. I'd now like to invite, invite the runner-up coach from the Kingbra Tigers, James Lang, forward to say a few words. Firstly, just a big um, acknowledgement to the STJFL and the umpires we had here today. Thank you for everything you've done. Um, secondly, just big congratulations to Clarence. Uh, you're an extremely talented bunch and I would have loved to play played you guys more throughout the season. I don't know if we've only played each other twice. Um, but you came out here today, showed your skill. You're a great club with some great players. So big congratulations. You've set the standard here today and you did a great job. Well done. Uh, to the Kingbird Tigers, black side. Look, I'm so proud of you guys throughout the season. We had an undefeated season up until now, and throughout the whole season, you guys have grown, progressed, enjoyed your footy, and it's just been a pleasure for me to coach uh, all of you and get to know you guys uh, so well. So I uh, hope you embrace this moment for what it is and prepare ourselves for the 2024 season. All right, cheers. Thanks very much, James. To present the Best On Field Award, I'll invite the president of the Barwicks STJFL, Jim Horn, forward. And the best player on the ground in the 2023 Under-16 Girls Grand Final goes to Clarence player number five, Maisie Clark. Um, I'd just like to say thanks to King Bra for a great game and obviously well done to the girls, great effort today. Well done, Maisie. Uh, now I'd like to invite the Premiership coach forward to say a few words and also present the Premiership medallions, Nick Legs Davy. Thanks for that. Uh, firstly to James and the girls from Kingborough, well done. Uh, you've had a fantastic year, a uh, couple of milestones during the week too, so congratulations to those girls and to you and your group. Um, you know, you've, you've had a, a real good year and didn't go your way today, but you know, keep going, keep sticking at your football. Thanks to the umpires, thanks to the STJFL um, and importantly all the sponsors of the STJFL. They do um, you know, put on a really good show, and particularly this time of year, with all the grand finals they get um, over the next few weeks, it's really great for the, for the kids who are playing the game. So well done to you guys. Um, to our girls, great effort today. Um, it's funny, I've, I've sort of coached a fair bit of my time, and uh, it's probably one of the greatest experiences I've had is coaching these girls. It was totally different at the start and certainly not what I expected um, but I've enjoyed it immensely you're a terrific bunch of uh, young women and uh, I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me and I've um, you know, thoroughly enjoyed it and um, yeah well done today great result well done yes okay number one Layla Arnold Number two, Lana Burke. Number three, Lana Davy. Number four, Lottie Brumby. Number five, Maisie Clark. Number six, Izzy Heroes. Number eight, Lily Harper. 
Number nine, Amelia Milne. Or 23. Uh, 10, Lacey Tilliard. Number 11, Elsie Batchelor. Number 12, Ava Smith. Number 13, Anna Costello. Number 14, Charlotte Ivory. Number 15, Millie Richardson. Number 16, Soph Curtis. Number 17, Liv Martin. Number 18, Charlotte Auxorius. Number 21, Ariel Cannell. And number 33, Sophie Harbach. And finally, our co-captains, number 19, Alani Houston, and number 20, Hayley Hart. And of course, a premiership medallion for the coach, Nick Davey. And I'll get Jim Horn to present the Premiership Cup to the coach, Nick Davey, and the Premiership captains, Alani Houston and Hayley Hart. Come on back, girls, and accept the Premiership medallion on behalf of your team. Jim, the cup is just there behind you. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 Premiers in the Barwicks STJFL for under 16 girls, the Clarence Roos. Mood food replay. Watch as she does a quick little kick out. Nice little handball, sorry. Kick straight through. That's the first goal of the game. Billy Richardson's actually kicked 40 goals in the home and away season this year. So that's that's a really good effort. Um, so yeah, looking like she's on early. Scramble. I've run down tackle to really set the tone. It was laid on. Third out. We'll have. Play on! 
That was Lily Harper there with that tackle. She's been really important these first sort of 10 minutes of this game, applying some really great pressure in the midfield. Great kick there as well. It'll end up in the hands of Charlotte Brumby. Probably a kick away from goal. Lead kick out the back. Richardson hands it off. There up there was Lang. She's looked lively again, but kick will be cut off and it'll be Lana Davy to kick it in, looking to play on. Not many leads presenting. They've got a whole bit of a paddock in that right side of the pocket. Mark taken. Strong mark taken there from her teammate. It was a nice mark from Ariel. Make it. And now the King Retires can try and run off the half back line. Pushing into the forward line. Walls there. She got taken. It's hot in the telephone box at the moment. And two Roos taking down Imogen Verdell, Maggie. Yeah, look, I'm getting so into this game because you can see that she just hit a brick wall and that was a beautifully executed tackle for a ball up by the umpire. Didn't quite get the hands to it, but the umpire says play on. In this grand final. Tap not really decisively won by anyone, but Michaela Lang is scrambling around the back of the ball, pushing the back. She gets away with this, does a handball to herself, but will she find someone to dispose it to? Fend off, kicks for goals, heads on through. But it slides to the right for a behind. But Tigers won't be just... Going to Hagen. Driving kick inside forward 50. Lang. Looked lively early. Here's Matilda Lang. She's been here, there and everywhere. Em just mentioned she's drifted down in that midfield forward role after coming off the half back. And she's got a thumping kick. We saw that just before. So let's see if she can get the Tigers first goal on the scoreboard. Will take some sort of kick. It's a difficult angle. Lang trickles in with a banana. <laughs> and the Tigers celebrate that well-earned opportunity. They have come out firing this quarter and there is nothing that's going to be left in the tank at the end of this game. Look at that celebration as we get the... Rocket Clark. Harper. It wasn't Harper, in fact. It was Hart. Got spun around. Richardson's lurking out the back. Taken without it. Free kick. Richardson is going to line up for her second goal of the afternoon here. We'll just look on the Mood Food replay. And unfortunately there, yeah, Ruby James just taking her without the ball. Richardson on a reasonably easy angle. Uh, reasonable angle here. We'll look to... Get Clarence a second, and that's what she does. Two goals to Millie Richardson, two goals to Clarence. And they'll extend their lead out to nine. And you would say that was probably against the momentum that the game's been going in. Uh, Mothered by the defender in Tigers. Desperate stuff, quick handball out the back, ball. wasn't taken. Scrambly ball, everyone's on ground level. One thing that I'm noticing about this game that I haven't quite seen in the other games is I peer out into the grandstand, and whilst there's a lot of people, I'm hearing the voice from them. And there's nothing better than when they're you're playing vocal. and everyone screams, that's ball. You love it when your crowd gets around. You step on goal from the stoppage. Umpire's given two big thumbs up, and Richardson has scored a goal. Another goal. Three goals so far. She is one to watch this game. Great start. Well, Clarence capitalising. Actually had eight scoring shots to three scoring shots there. This game. I'm loving the communication from the umpires to the to the girls to be really clear and concise when it's play on or not. It's made for a really free-flowing, exciting game. Yes, Getting those snaps on, that's a really good attempt to try and tackle. But these girls are very good at kicking at any angle and at all angles. That's the front and centre position oh. we wanted, but she's smarter than that. She gets the handball off, and do they capitalise? Yes, they do. Clarence have a game plan, and... Houston has scored another, the skipper. Looked really lively, it's a 22-point margin here. Mark was dropped in the end from Sullivan. We'll see, another throw in. One, two, eight, plays four, six, thirty. thanks to Brighton's Best Bakehouse scoreboard here. We've had another real swing in momentum this quarter. This first part of it belonged to Kimbra, but I would say the next part has really belonged to Clarence. Absolutely, with only a minute or so, Left on the board, 
They're going to have only a few more opportunities. Here we go. Oh. Perfectly picked up from out the back of the contest. Defenders just not in front, but we'll get another replay, as you can see. Umpire says you were just down there. Yep. All on. up. Tigers get a fingertips to it. Coming through, crashing through the pack. She's held without the football. I'm really liking this umpire, Ollie That's Franks. He's fine. clear and concise, as we just spoke about. He, he's you. doing a really good job. Mm. Great communication to the players as well. Not the kick that they want to have wanted, but is this the opportunity? Yes, it is! Our limping Rosie, our 104 games, Beagley medal winner, 60 goals this season, played in the Div 1 SFLW competition. She has shown what she is made of. Now this is the emotion that we're talking about. We're getting a bit of pushy and shabby. And that's all from the adrenaline coming in because this game game means so much to these girls. Ruse get a fist to it. Fly on. Out the back. Cute little, little handball. Fly Long on. high kick. Doesn't really go anywhere in particular, but it's a foot race. Michaela Lang looks absolutely dominating. She takes a bounce. She takes a little another bounce. She dances around everybody. Go. Does it go in? Oh. Oh, and it drips to that pole. Born out of bounds. Brown goes back to the top of the 50. Smith has a chance, but she comes into trouble. Kicking in danger. Umpire says no stress. That's a push in the back. Umpire agrees. Thanks, umpire. I feel supported now. <laughs> <laughs> Ruse will do something with it. They're going to kick it into a very dangerous area, and that was intercepted by Tigers. Picked up by another Tigers. Held without the ball. Umpire says doesn't matter. Quick run through the centre of the ground. Kicking through the corridor. Nice little tap, like you said, M. Oh. They've got the momentum. Big handball goes across. Waits. Waits again. Oh. She can't kick it on left. She kicks it on her right. And that goes through. Incredible goal. From end to end, and Clarence scored that goal. <laughs> Listen out for his calls in the game. They're super educational and super informative, so... Bit of a special shout out to him and that super consistent, um, accurate umpiring. Just letting the game flow on. He's really set the tone for a professional environment. Um, so super exciting. Ollie Franks. <laughs> so about to get underway here. The last quarter of the STJFL Under 16's grand final. Ollie Franks will throw the ball up. To get us underway. So, quick kick out. Yeah, hand pass. Yep. Yeah, we'll see. You go in the vicinity of the 50 there. Richardson meets it out, handing it off to a teammate. Shakes and bakes around. Charlotte Ivory snap on goal. It's going to land. Excellent goal. So, Clarence Ruse are leaping into grand final success. Oh my, did you just hear? Pretty good non-goals, <laughs> and it's awesome to see them getting the opportunity. Absolutely. So a little bit of fight at the top of the 50 as Clarence want to really keep it in and take every opportunity they can. Richardson looks dangerous. She's got the body on. She dives on the back. A little bit of a push in the back, but it doesn't matter because someone else was there to grab and snap and score. Hart, skipper, Houston skipper, sorry, for her third goal of the day. Boundary umpire's ball. I just love the attempts. Like, I mean, it, you get to this point, and if I was Clarence Ruse, I'd be doing the same thing. Just have a crack, because why not? If you get on the scoreboard, it's great. If it goes for a behind, you'll reset and do it all over again. Ball comes up. Rucks go out at even tap. No one decisively wins. Ball goes to ground. Snap. Snap is the word of the day. Another goal. To the captain, was one of the Beakley winners and has had a fair bit of experience with the Play Div on. 1 uh, SFLW Clarence Ruse. So shows where her orientation comes from. Smart little handball, driving kick into the 50. Mark beautifully taken with the backup of the Play Clarence Ruse team. Play on, she's off your line. 
Another kick into the hot spot. Didn't take it. Richardson, what does she do best? You know it. Dash and shake, shake and what is shake and bake. <laughs> shake and bake. Dash and I don't know what I was saying. I just get so excited every time she gets around the ball. And the shake she and the bake. <laughs> and that's another goal. How many goals in total is that for Richardson? That is five. Wow. Driving kick inside forward. Fifty. One more goal. Definitely please coach Nick Davey. Sock it off the ground. Lang again. She's going to burst through the middle of North Hobart Oval. One bounce. She's going to run. Two bounces again. Drilling kick inside forward. 50 in the direction of Rose. Can't quite finish it. Her ability to just create space is incredible. Like every time she gets the ball, she's fine space mm. somehow. It's great. I'm really inspired by her confidence. And mm. I feel like... Um, with my own finals lingering, this is what I wanted to get out of today's game is be inspired by the young female footballers, the bright future for Tasmania with an AFLW team on the cusp. Will Lang be a part of that team? Yes, she will. A goal on the siren to reward the many efforts that we have seen this Kimber Tigers outfit put on today. Congratulations to both teams. What an amazing display of football. Everyone should be so proud of themselves, but particularly the Roos, as we can watch them now celebrate their tremendous win. Yeah, no, it was an excellent game from Clarence. Um, just the better team on the day, maybe. It was the nerves from Kingborough. Um,